giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And by Striker. Striker is looking for first and fun fans to join their team because they want to help support you in your first journey. Help develop solutions for current and future problems like the new emergency relief bed. Get details on how to join their team at careers.strykr.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Tonight, we have the pleasure of hosting two guests from Team 5460 Strike Zone out of the pier. 5460, unfortunately, did not have the chance to compete this season, but still created an amazing machine in Dart, and we will find more about it here on Infimidation. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Nick Jr. And I'm Sky. Uh, yeah, and as I stated in the intro, uh, we're, we have, we're fortunate enough to have two guests from 5460 out of the pier, so um, I'm going to go ahead and let them, in, let them introduce themselves. So, uh, Matt, let's start with you. Hi, uh, I'm Matt Schneider. Um, I'm the lead uh, mechanical design mentor and drive coach for 5460. Uh, I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering at Kettering University. Go Bulldogs! So, and I've been a uh, student um, on the team in 2015 and 16, and I've been mentoring 5460 since 2017. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Matt and Parker. Uh, hi, I'm Parker Duncan. I'm uh, the driver for 5460. I'm also um, on the design team. Um, I'm a junior. Um, about it <laughs> cool yeah hey, thanks parker and uh thank you both for coming on so um <clears throat> excuse me moving forward um let's kind of dive into 5460 so uh since the team started 2015 they've won a total of 22 awards um between awards and finalists um 10 final appearances two michigan state championship runner-ups in 2016 and 2019 um, and although they only have two blue banners in their team history the rest of the stats here should speak for themselves um Strike Zone has continued to push themselves to the limit year in and year out and really had a breakout year last year in Destination Deep Space and was on track for another year to truly push them to that elite status as an upcoming powerhouse in the state of Michigan. Um, and state of Michigan or anybody else that's uh, listening right now, <laughs> if you have any questions uh, for Strike Zone, remember you can put them in chat and remember to tag at first updates now for them to be answered towards the end of the show. Yeah, for sure. So... Um, kind of moving forward, um, pretty much uh, we're going to break some stuff in. So uh, Sky's actually going to go ahead and take the first thing with uh, Bill's season schedule and organization. Yeah. So uh, as Nick mentioned, of course, there was a, kind of a breakout season last year with you guys uh, where you really started to, at least in Michigan, become that like solid kind of household name <laughs> or shop name. Uh, and with all of that uh, success, um, from carrying over from last year and lessons learned, what was kind of the general architecture going into the season? What was your uh, approach with like sub teams or um, how you uh, approach the design challenges this year? Um, so I'll start. So last year uh, for 2019, we did some it's kind of our first year really getting uh, into design um, as far as like really trying to get the robot fully designed by the end of week two, three. Um, our design process and prototyping process for 2019 was very efficient and went really, really fast. And we carried a lot of those things over for the 2020 season. Um, a lot of that sort of making the uh, design process smooth uh, is getting all the students uh, involved with CAD or getting them introduced to it and getting some of them really well trained in it, uh, along with working side by side with uh, mentors and students to hone their uh, skills um, in certain areas of the team, uh, so. 
Yeah, and um, so Parker, uh, since you've kind of come up, well, I guess this is actually for both of you, since you both were on the team of students, right? Mm -hmm. um, how has that, maybe even reaching back a little bit further when you're kind of laying the basis for your general design philosophy as a team, um, with what um, manufacturing capabilities you had and things like that, how has that evolved throughout the time to lead you into how you've tackled the problems this year? Yeah, so um, our manufacturing capabilities through sponsors has grown um, a lot over the past couple seasons. Um, when we started, we were didn't have much machines, um, maybe like a drill press, and we were actually sharing a room with the Chimeras, Team 1684. Um, we now have our own room, and we've grown our own tools in shop, and as well, we've got a lot of sponsors with uh, like CNC mills and laser cutters, stuff like that. So now that you've had at least a, a couple uh, robots worth of uh, design experience with that greater manufacturing capability. Um, what are the things that for you guys, you really can't go without now? What, what's what's the most important machine or machines in the shop? Um, so probably our most important uh, machine, I guess sponsor um, is water jetting. Um, I know a lot of teams utilize that sort of service also. Um, we do all of our drivetrain transmissions um, in our own manipulator um, gearboxes. We design all of our own. Uh, so we get all those plates uh, water jetted um, through our sponsor DCS Water Jet located in Lapeer, Michigan. And they help out a lot by supplying the material needed to cut the, um, the parts uh, along with cutting all of them for us. So. All right, uh, just building off that just a little bit more, uh, you mentioned you designed your own uh, gearboxes and like some of your, mm -hmm. well, major mechanisms, let's just say. Uh, how does the off season uh, go into um, or contribute to the like confidence of your growing CAD team um, to, or your growing manufacturing team to um, hit the ground running when the actual season comes. So how does the, the do you have like off season projects and what's involved in that? Yeah, so this off season, um, we worked on designing a demo robot, <clears throat> excuse me, using our 2017 uh, practice robot chassis. So um, we had one of our newer CAD, CAD students work on that and learn the fundamentals of CAD and our CADing philosophies and design philosophies like that. Okay, um, I guess and maybe one more larger architecture uh, question before I, you know, we kick over to the actual design of this year's robot, which uh, Nick will take on. Uh, but as far as the rest of the team, we know it's just more than just a mechanical team, even though that's what a lot of us are interested <laughs> in, right? Uh, so as far as other things that really facilitate the ability to to tackle these problems in the off season or to quickly tackle these problems during the build season. Um, what things like um, acquiring new sponsors, you mentioned you, you've just jumped up with your capabilities over the last couple seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so like acquiring new sponsors or um, acquiring new talent, um, where do you focus that energies into student development, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. How has that evolved over the last uh, two or three or four seasons? Yeah, so the last couple seasons, um, we've really been spending a majority of the summer um, off-season time either at demos for sponsors or at community events um, or acquiring new sponsors. Um, we always kind of challenge the kids to go out and say, like, if you can get a new sponsor um, each year, we give them the incentives to do so. Uh, and um, we... Going towards the fall, we start doing uh, VEX uh, EDR. Um, we have a few couple teams that we uh, have our younger members more all hands-on. There's hardly uh, any mentor involvement with that. So they learn a lot from you know the hands-on sort of trying things out here, there. Um, and then you know we take all those trials and errors and we teach them the right ways towards the end of the fall season, moving right into build season. All right. Uh, quite interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you guys doing that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and transition to Tyler here for a quick read on our sponsor, PTC. Yeah, thanks, Nick. So PTC, once again, if you uh, aren't watching live with shows, guys, you've got to check out the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on right now. Onshape is an incredible <laughs> program 
where you have an opportunity uh, to not only get it for free as being part of a first team, but get this, it is web-based, it is cloud-based. You don't need a workhorse powerhouse machine to do it. Anybody can use it. I have seen this used on Chromebooks. I have seen it used on low-end PCs and of course high-end PCs as well too. But phenomenal program for you to use. And guess what? Robots to the Rescue is a challenge for you to design a robot that tackles a real-world challenge. You can design whatever you want that works for you. It's available for FRC and FTC teams. And they are giving away over $7,000 uh, into your team's account. So you can get your share of that if you go to onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. That's your opportunity uh, to enter in the contest. You have to submit by May 15th, and they'll be showing the best in shows later on uh, in that month as well, too. So lots of cool stuff with there. Uh, so make sure you check this out. And as mentioned before, it's going to be a rough season coming up, guys. It's going to be hard to keep getting sponsored. It's going to be hard to keep getting money coming in. This is a great opportunity for you to win uh, registration uh, costs or putting towards your registration costs for your teams. So make sure you go check this out on shape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thank you, Tyler, and uh, thanks to our new friends from PTC. So uh, go ahead and kind of move over here. We're going to make a transition. So um, we're going to kind of dive, um, you know, really into the design of uh, Dart um, and, you know, your guys are out for this season. So, um, Parker, kind of going through um, some of the li list of topics that you gave me, um, one thing that you listed was uh, West Coast Drive over Swerve um, and, you know, why you guys decided to go with, uh, you know, a standard West Coast Drive. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, so first, uh, we have never built um, a swerve. We have, Matt has designed some, and we've looked at them a lot, but we never actually built one. Um, uh, we want to spend a lot of time in perfecting that process before we were to actually go ahead and make it. But we love the, uh, the West Coast Drive system. The first time we used it was in 2017, and we had amazing, um, uh, like we loved it a lot in that year just the versatility of it and the, the weight savings of it. Um, we find with the different wheel combinations, you can make a robot with West Coast Drive for any game. Um, like last year, we had the pneumatic tires for getting off the hab. This year, we were very light and agile with the Omni wheels on the corners. Um, we find it uh, very helpful for maneuverability. Yeah, so just on that topic, uh, you said a uh, very light robot. Um, I guess, uh, What did uh, Dart end up weighing in at, and uh, what was the reasoning for kind of uh, staying light versus uh, building um, a close or two max weight robot? Um, so the weight of Dart came in around 102 uh, right before – Yeah, right before quarantine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that was with everything on it. It, re it was ready to compete. Um, so is. I lost track. What was the other question? Oh uh, yeah. So was that um, was the weight done on purpose, or were you kind yeah. of uh, just going with it, or? So last year, 2019 robot um, Voyager was a big boy. Um, <laughs> big boy. <laughs> big boy. Uh, it weighed a lot, and uh, the drivetrain definitely was inefficient, um, mostly due to the weight, and it kind of made us. It was hard to maneuver around the field, uh, especially with the the field being a lot. You know closer like the, the scoring objects being a lot closer to each other and just a defensive bot would get in the way and be very hard to get around them um so a lot of the decisions this year were kind of influenced off the being able to maneuver easily uh and efficiently yeah for sure so um Parker, uh, really quick, uh, we're going to go into, um, I know in the video being shown on stream right now, um, that is uh, what the hopper that's currently on Dart, but uh, in the list of things you gave me, you said that you guys were actually planning to make a new modification. So uh, if you kind of want to go into that a little bit. Yeah, so um, after we went to uh, Team Rush's uh, practice facility, we came back and we knew that we needed a new hopper if we wanted to compete at a higher level going on to week six states and on to worlds. So we went back and uh, we came up with what you see on screen right now, this design um, where it streamlines the balls a lot better than what we had. Um, we saw a lot of success um, with 3538. They had the brushes um, feeding. We saw that when we were at um, Team Rush's facility. So there was just a lot of that. We wanted to uh, streamline the balls better and make them make it a little bit quicker to cycle them through. Yeah, for sure. Um, so kind of, um, you know, going into this year, 
uh, not having a bag day. Um, you know, you guys made the move to not compete until week four um, to gain, you know, those couple um, extra weeks. So uh, how do you think that, you know, helped you in that sense and did it help you at all? Um, so whether or not we competed, you know, week one, week two, all the way up to four, um, like we were going to this year, uh, we were aiming to have the robot done by the artificial bag day. Um, we had a, a sponsored demo um, scheduled for that day or a sponsor showcase uh, where this, our, some of our partners came in and uh, looked at our progress of the robot. So the goal was to have as much of a complete robot by then as possible. And we met that goal. So it, we kind of felt it was important to make some sort of artificial deadline uh, without having the actual you know, bag day date. Um, you don't want to get crazy and use all of those weeks for building and designing. Um, you need some time for tuning and prototyping and drive practice, of course. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I, you know, uh, I, like you said, um, I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't really think it would have mattered for you guys because you guys always tend to, you know, make it work no matter what. Right. So um, <laughs> kind of moving forward now um, before we're going to grab a couple questions from chat after. But before that, um, Tyler, do you want to tell us a little bit about Striker? Yeah, so uh, friends at Stryker, once again, uh, hey guys, lots going on, uh, of course, with COVID-19, everything like that. And Stryker is a leading medical uh, technology company, so we really want to highlight them. And if you didn't hear, by the way, if you didn't catch our show, this is not a Stryker plug here, but if you didn't catch the show a couple of weeks ago uh, with... Uh, uh, our discussions about COVID-19. We brought in uh, Jerry from Stryker. Uh, we also brought in uh, Joe Johnson uh, coming in and, and just had some fantastic guests really talking about uh, what your teams can do. Please go check that out. It's on YouTube. But we do want to talk about with Stryker uh, what they're doing right now to help combat uh, COVID-19 and what they're doing for that and what they have come out with uh, is called the uh, new uh, emergency relief bed. Uh, they are making a thousand of these per day right now, per day, cranking out 1,000 of these, uh, 5,000 a week uh, during the work week. And the, this is just super cool that in a relatively short period of time, they came up with this and it's being shipped out to hospitals all over. And they're actually apparently up to now uh, or trying to target 10,000 beds per week. Uh, so really super cool stuff from Stryker. If you're from Michigan, you should know all about Stryker and what a fantastic uh, company they are and how they employ firsters all over. And they are looking for you to join their team. So if you're in first and you actually want a company that supports you for being in first, go check out careers.stryker.com forward slash first and see if there's a career for you today. Yeah, thank you, Tyler, and uh, thanks to our friends at Stryker. So um, kind of moving forward, uh, we do have two questions from chat. Uh, the first one is from uh, XPOS underscore assassin, and um, this can be for uh, either of you guys, but uh, has there been any rivalry um, surrounding Lapeer Robotics with, you know, Strike Zone uh, and Chim Chimeras, you know, in the same building? And uh, if so, has it spaced the team and how they compete? You can take that one, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even around longer. Yeah. So, you know, Lapeer Robotics is a nonprofit. Uh, us in the Chimeras have created in the last year or so. Um, it's kind of a joint effort to try to pull in um, larger sponsorship monies in hopes to uh, possibly get a, um, a resource center, kind of like Kettering Universities, because uh, there's quite a bit of teams in Lapeer County and there's not so many sponsors or, you know, resources in the area for all of us. So having a common area that we can pull stuff to is helpful. Um, between the two teams. Yeah. There's, you know, you know, we wish each other luck. Um, we, you know, we give each other love notes on our doors before we go to shit <laughs> like, uh, you know, we'll say, you know, go uh, get them uh, chimeras, uh, go get that blue banner or something. And then they'll repeat the same for us, which is really nice. But you know, there's always that competitive spirit. And I think the last couple of years, we've kind of pushed each other to um, become better um, teams and develop better processes. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Each, you know, both of our teams have become more and more competitive each year. And I think it's, you know, secretly we want to be each other want to be better than the other. So we, we kind of just, you know, it pushes our teams to develop more and, and grow more and be more competitive. Yeah, we also have another question from chat. This one's from Lax Dude Two. Um, we talked a bit about the amount of CAD that you put in, the amount of design time you put into on the uh, on the computer. But the question is, what system do you guys actually CAD with? 
Yeah, so for um, 2019 and 2020, we have shifted over to SolidWorks um, using the uh, free one they give out being a first team. Before that, we used Inventor. Um, we shifted over because um, Matt actually at his works uh, uses it um, just because he knew it better and we could learn better off of on it off through him. Yeah, I feel like SolidWorks. I feel like SolidWorks is a more user-friendly program. Um, and then uh, we also, to add on to that, we use GrabCAD for all of our file management. And we have organized all of our files by subsystems. And we have a pretty extensive part numbering technique that kind of keeps everything organized for us. So, Yeah, awesome. Uh, and uh, one more question. Um, this could be obviously for either of you. But uh, what has been your personal favorite robots? Um, could be on your team um, or not on your team and to either build or watch and compete? Um, I would say my favorite robot on the team is um, probably 2019. That was my first year driving with it, and uh, I just had a lot of fun that season. For off the team, my favorite's probably uh, 254's 2016 robot. Um, there's a video on YouTube of them in a practice match, um, and it just hits every shot, and it's that's just very inspirational. I, I love watching that robot. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt? Yeah, so personally, one of my favorite robots that I've built was, or helped built, and was... 2016's robot um it was super competitive it was a little bit jank but it did very well yeah, stay <laughs> runner up yeah um personally my favorite robot uh it's kind of a tie between like 2016's 118 and 148 i really liked both of the robots that year yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, uh, that's all the time we have for tonight. Um, you know, I want to thank uh, both Matt and Parker for coming on, and uh, thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, Fund needs your help to stay live, loud, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fund Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and here live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, our guests, Matt M. Parker from 5460, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators and chat. The next show is We the North Shallow Dive with Team 48, Team Elite. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.